the Indian Army successfully conducted trials of the indigenously developed Akash Prime Air Defense System in Ladakh, marking a significant step in bolstering India's air defense capabilities. Officials confirmed that the trials were carried out under extreme weather and high altitude conditions to evaluate the system's performance in operational scenarios. Developed by DRDO and produced by Bharat Dynamics Limited, BDL, Akash Prime is an upgraded variant of the original Akash system, featuring enhanced accuracy, improved reaction time, and better performance against fast-moving aerial threats. The trial's success comes at a time of heightened strategic focus on the northern borders, and it reflects India's push for self-reliance in critical military technologies, especially as tensions with China continue to influence defense posturing in the region. India's ambitious hypersonic missile program, dubbed Project Vishnu, has reached a critical juncture as it awaits key funding approval from the Ministry of Defense for full-scale development and testing. Spearheaded by DRDO, the project focuses on the development of the ETLDHCM, a Mach 8-capable extended-range long-distance hypersonic cruise missile. Preliminary designs and lab-level validations have reportedly been completed, with the missile envisioned to feature scramjet propulsion, stealth characteristics, and deep strike capabilities exceeding 2,000 kilometers. If approved, the project will enter the prototype and flight testing phase, potentially altering the strategic balance in the region. The program reflects India's intent to join a select group of nations with operational hypersonic systems, as it responds to similar advancements by China and Russia in this high-speed weapons domain. In a major boost to India's defense self-reliance, the government has cleared a rupees 20,000 crore project to develop six indigenous airborne warning and control systems under the Netra MK2 program. Spearheaded by DRDO, in partnership with Airbus and Indian firms led by Adani Defense, the project will convert six Airbus A321 jets, acquired from Air India, into high-tech surveillance aircraft. These will be equipped with ASA radars, 360-degree coverage, Elant Comet systems, and advanced command and control suites. Structural modifications and radar integration are expected to take about three years, with the first aircraft likely delivered by 2026 to 27. The project aims to replace reliance on imported Falcon systems and expand beyond the limited indigenous Netra fleet, while also advancing India's aerospace capabilities and supporting the Atmanurbar Bharat initiative. In a major push toward indigenization and coastal security enhancement, the Ministry of Defense has issued a request for proposal in July 2025 to acquire 15 C-295 maritime patrol aircraft. The aircraft will be manufactured in India by the Tata Airbus joint venture under the Make in India initiative. The proposal includes equipping the Indian Navy and Coast Guard with advanced maritime surveillance platforms to replace aging Dornier 228 and IL-38 aircraft. These new generation C-295s will be customized for long-range patrol, anti-submarine warfare, and search and rescue missions, integrating state-of-the-art sensors and mission systems. The move reflects India's strategic shift towards building domestic aerospace capabilities while strengthening maritime domain awareness amid growing challenges in the Indian Ocean region, especially from China's expanding naval footprint. India has formally sent a letter of request to the US for the joint production of Javelin anti-tank guided missiles ATGMs, under the Make in India initiative. If approved, the advanced Fire and Forget third-generation missile, famed for its performance against Russian tanks in Ukraine, will be produced on Indian soil with American technology. The missile, developed by Lockheed Martin and Raytheon, has a range of up to 4 kilometers, weighs 22 kilograms, and is ideal for high-altitude warfare in regions like Ladakh and Arunachal Pradesh. 
the estimated cost per unit could be rupees 1 to 1.5 crore, with DRDO and firms like BDL or LNT likely leading the manufacturing. This move aligns with India's broader defense collaborations with the US, such as jet engine co-production and MQ-9 drone deals, signaling India's growing shift from an arms buyer to a defense manufacturer. In a major boost to aviation training in the Northeast, the 65 Manipur Air Squadron NCC inaugurated the state's first-ever aircraft flight simulator on July 13, 2025, at Impulse DM College. The facility was unveiled by Group Captain Sanjay Ghosh, the Northeast NCC director, during a formal ceremony attended by senior officials, cadets, and faculty members. The simulator, designed to offer realistic flight experiences, is expected to enhance practical training for Air Wing NCC cadets, especially those aspiring to join the Indian Air Force or aviation-related fields. The initiative aligns with the NCC's broader aim of providing modern, tech-enabled learning environments across India. This development marks a significant step toward strengthening youth engagement and aviation awareness in the strategically important northeastern region. India and Russia are working to link their domestic payment systems, rupee and MIR, enabling direct financial transactions in rupee and ruble, bypassing the US-dominated SWIFT and dollar networks. Russian Ambassador Denis Alipov confirmed that 85% of bilateral trade is already in national currencies, and discussions are underway to establish a common exchange rate system. This move will reduce transaction fees, enhance economic sovereignty, and challenge Western financial dominance. India's rupee and UPI are gaining global traction, while BRICS nations are jointly developing BRICS Pay, a blockchain-based payment platform. The collaboration signals a new economic era, potentially weakening the dollar's monopoly. Though challenges remain, such as US pressure and trade imbalances, India is asserting its strategic autonomy, blending diplomacy with digital power in the global economic arena. In response to growing aerial threats, particularly swarm drones used by Pakistan along the line of control during the May 2025 clashes, India is reportedly considering Germany's rainmetal Skynex air defense system. The Indian Army's urgency stems from the need to replace aging L-70 and Zu-23 mm guns, which are seen as inadequate against modern drone warfare and precision-guided threats. Skynex built around the Erlikon 35mm revolver gun MK3, offers advanced short-range air defense capabilities. It fires 1,000 rounds per minute and uses advanced hit efficiency and destruction ammunition, which creates a cone of tungsten projectiles to neutralize fast-moving aerial targets, including drones and cruise missiles. Its modular, open architecture design allows integration with multiple radar and sensor systems, including the X-TAR 3D radar, with a 50 km detection range. The system's battlefield credibility was demonstrated by Ukrainian forces in recent conflicts against Russian drone swarms, making it particularly appealing to India, which claims to have intercepted over 500 drones during recent border escalations. However, Skynex's high cost and alignment with India's Atmanirbar Bharat policy may complicate procurement, requiring negotiations on technology transfer and domestic manufacturing. Still, its cutting-edge features could significantly strengthen India's layered air defense strategy. Based on some media reports, India is developing a next-generation strategic bomber, the ultra-long-range strike aircraft, designed to deliver nuclear or conventional payloads across intercontinental distances without aerial refueling. Envisioned as a stealthy swing-wing platform with a range exceeding 12,000 kilometers, the bomber would mark India's entry into an exclusive club alongside the US, Russia, and China. Led by DRDO, HAL, and the Aircraft Development Agency, the program aims to fly its first prototype between 2032 and 2035. 
The initiative gained urgency after the 2020 Gowan clash and China's rapid air power advancements, especially the upcoming H-20 bomber. To close its strategic gap, India seeks to enhance second strike capability with an airborne nuclear platform. The ULRA's design draws on global benchmarks like Russia's 2160 and America's B-21, with potential armaments including the BrahMos NG, Agni-1P missiles, and precision-guided munitions. Early development includes wind tunnel testing, mock-ups, and international talks for engines and stealth tech. However, challenges such as engine availability, high costs, infrastructure gaps, and doctrinal shifts remain. If successful, ULRA would revolutionize India's deterrence posture, enabling strikes far beyond the subcontinent and reinforcing global power projection under the Atmanur Barbarat vision. In a move to strengthen India's aerial combat edge, Israeli defense firm Rafael Advanced Defense Systems has reportedly offered its cutting-edge Sky Sting long-range air-to-air missile to the Indian Air Force. The proposal aims to integrate the missile into India's frontline fighters, particularly the Su-30 MKI fleet, amid rising concerns over China and Pakistan's deployment of stealth aircraft and advanced long-range missiles like the Chinese PL-15. The Sky Sting missile is equipped with a three-pulse rocket motor, enabling it to strike targets at ranges up to 250 kilometers while maintaining speed and agility. This standoff capability would allow IF pilots to engage enemy aircraft from well beyond visual range, ensuring safety and tactical advantage. Designed for modern electronic warfare, the missile features an advanced radio frequency seeker for early target detection and lock-on, even against stealth aircraft. Its electronic counter-countermeasures, or ECCM capabilities, enhance survivability in contested airspace. If accepted, this would mark a significant enhancement to the IF's combat readiness and extend the long-standing defense collaboration between India and Israel. The offer also supports India's broader military modernization agenda and efforts to maintain air superiority in a complex regional threat environment. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.